So let's review learning targets and learning objectives. First, we're going to recap, we're going to clarify, and then we'll practice writing both learning targets and learning objectives. So a learning target is a general statement of what students should know or be able to do by the end of the lesson or topic. Note how general statement is underlined, general. This is a broad idea. This is not super specific. A learning target is created from the learning standards and states the goal of the lesson topic or lesson or topic. Uh, when we talked about the learning standards, we know that learning standards are created uh, uh, both nationally and by states and are used in the development in, of curriculum. Um, and then the curriculum trickles down to our lesson plans. Learning targets are a summary of the lesson objectives or an overall statement of what the students can do following a few lessons on the same topic. It could also just apply to one lesson depending on how in-depth the topic is and how much time it takes to review. Learning targets are phrased as I can or I will. They can also be phrased as we can or we will, depending on how you want the students to feel about the lesson. It really does help with their overall ownership of their learning. Let's take a look at a few examples of learning targets. So the first one here is, I can write research notes using keywords and phrases. You guys might have seen this one in your own particular English classes. Perhaps you're working on a research project. This would be a learning target that would apply for the days that you're working on the research project. And it really does state that you can research, you can write research notes using keywords and phrases that you may be pulling from your uh, research on a particular topic. Okay. I can summarize my reading using important details. So it says exactly what the student is going to be doing. It doesn't talk specifically about any type of reading that they're going to be doing, but it does say that they are going to use important details. So we're still staying pretty general here. The next one says, I can show the relationship between multiplication and division. So again, we're talking about we're using a verb here, I show, um, and then we're talking about a more specific condition, which is the relationship. So, but we're not exactly being super specific in terms of how they're going to go about doing this, but just the fact that they're going to be able to do it. Lastly, we have here, I can describe how New York City history or New York history has roots in Native American culture. Again, it's fairly general. We do have a verb we're going to be describing and we do have like some sort of topic which is New York history, but we don't have anything specific in how we're going to do about how we're going to go about doing this or how we're going to evaluate once the student how we're going to evaluate whether or not the student actually has attained or achieved the goal we're expecting them to achieve. So let's take a second after you've seen those examples and let's try writing a few learning targets. What I'd like you to do is write a learning target for your elementary classroom using the following lesson um, subjects within lessons. So you're going to write a learning target for a math lesson, a learning target for a reading lesson, a learning target for a science lesson, and to make things a little bit more interesting, a learning target for a physical education lesson. Take a moment now and use the screen that will pop up shortly to um, log your answers. Be clear about which learning target is going for which of the particular lessons that you have listed here. Great. Now that we've gotten down how to write a learning target, what you're going to do is go over how the difference, what the differences are between learning targets and learning objectives. So we've talked extensively now about how learning targets are super general. They're pretty, they're pretty broad in terms of what they 
um, talk about for our students' achievement. Learning objectives are really the more clear, specific, measurable uh, goals that we have for our students in particular lessons. Okay, so learning objectives are the specific measurable statements of what students will be able to accomplish or will be accomplishing during the lesson. So learning objectives have three main parts. And while separately they're confusing, once you put them together, it's pretty clear as to what, what it is a learning objective is. The first part is a behavior. So it's whatever the student is doing, okay? The second part is the condition. This is the what, the when, the how. And the third part is the criteria. It's the evaluation piece of the learning objective. The condition and the evaluation are really what set learning objectives apart from learning targets. You saw that there was a behavior in all of our learning targets. It definitely said, I can read, or I can research, or I can compose. But it didn't have a lot of specific conditions, and it certainly didn't have any specific criteria to say whether the student was able to do it, and how would you tell if they did. The first one we're going to talk about is behavior. So behavior is what the students will be doing. It is a verb that can be observed and measured. Some examples of these behaviors that we can witness with our students are things like classify, execute, establish, or sketch. These verbs come from something specific. You don't have to always think them up. There's something called Bloom's Taxonomy, and this is definitely a vocab word. So go ahead and make sure, I'm going to bring up, make sure my pen's on here. Go ahead and make sure that you have this written down because it's really important that you understand what Bloom's Taxonomy is. Okay. So Bloom's Taxonomy is a hierarchy of learning verbs. It goes from lower order thinking to higher order thinking skills. Our goal as teachers is get, to get our students to work on the higher order thinking skills. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So this is basically Bloom's taxonomy. It looks like many of the other pyramids that we've looked at in the past. Remembering that this bottom section where you can see um, remember here. This is our foundation, okay? So we need to get our students to do this first before we can get them to do any of the above categories. So remember is to recall facts and basic concepts. Some of the Bloom's verbs underneath, underneath of here are define, duplicate, list. These are the words that we might use in order to start our learning objectives. So you might have a student define a list of vocabulary words associated with um, zoo animals. You might have students list the animals on the farm who are mammals, which would be most of them. But um, you may have the students state the definition of a particular word um, as it relates to a certain topic. Again, you can see how I have the different components of the learning objectives, the behavior, the condition, and the criteria in all of the examples that I just gave you. Let's talk about understand. This basically means that students can explain ideas or concepts. First, you're just asking them to remember something that they know it. They know the words. Then you're going to ask them to understand what those words really mean. Some of the verbs associated with this category might be classify, describe, discuss, explain. The students are really doing a little bit more with the information that you've presented to them. These bottom two are known as our lower order thinking skills. They're great for introductory lessons, but what we're really working towards are the higher order thinking skills like apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. 
On your lesson plan, these learning objectives, understand and remember, should be listed first because we're going to do those before we do any of the higher order thinking skills. But as you move on through lessons, it's important to remember that our students should work towards these categories up here after having um, securely understood and, and really grasp these lower order skills down here. To apply is the students using information in new situations. So they're really taking the information that they've learned and they're going to start implementing it, solving with it. They're going to use it. They're going to demonstrate. These are the different types of verbs that they would use under apply. Then we have the analyze category, which is really drawing connections among ideas. So some of the verbs that you would use for your learning objectives here are differentiate, organize, relate, compare, contrast, distinguish. You're really uh, showing that you can understand more than one concept in relation to the other. These are our mid-order thinking skills. Again, you're a step up from below, but we still want to work towards that top, uh, top tier of Bloom's taxonomy. So evaluating. It's making um, a justification, a stand, or a decision about the information that you have. So the students may do things like appraise the information. They may argue or defend on a topic. They may judge a certain topic. They may critique or value or weigh a certain topic. All of these are really good vocabulary, uh, I'm sorry, really good verbs to use for the beginning of your learning objectives when you're really having the students um, go way more in depth with a topic. Finally, we have something called create. This is the top tier. When we know our students really understand a topic, they're able to produce new or original work that uses the concept that you have originally taught them, but goes a step further to formulate their own ideas, to investigate further, to develop the ideas, and to design something that incorporates all of the Bloom's taxonomy levels in an original way. This is the higher order thinking skills that we're looking for our students. We can think of this in a very simple way. These thinking skill levels go from easier to harder as you work up the pyramid. Okay, let's move on to condition. So Bloom's refers to the behavior, the verbs at the beginning of the learning objective. The next thing to come is the condition, and that's the what, the when, and how should the behavior be completed. So just some examples here. We can talk about the words in the book. We can talk about the equation for area. We can talk about a set of rules for observing the changes. We could talk about the bowl of fruit. If this isn't making much sense to you, it's because it's a piece of what the larger idea of a learning objective is. Let's move on and we'll see how this works out. The last piece of a learning objective is a criteria. The criteria is under what circumstances should the behavior be completed, or how can the behavior be assessed or evaluated? Some examples of criteria include into the parts of speech, to solve the problems on the worksheet with 85% accuracy, during the experiment, using line and cross-hatching techniques. If you followed with me here, basically what I did is I put the same parts in order every time. We can take and combine all three and create a specific and measurable goal that produce, pr promotes student achievement. So let's take a look at the examples that we've already talked about so far. If we put them together, the first is classify the words in the book into the parts of speech. The second is establish a set of rules for observing changes during the experiment. The third is execute the equation for area to solve the given problems with 85% accuracy. I'm gonna pause here and what I'm gonna do is show you just what I mean by behavior, condition, and criteria. For this particular 
um, learning objective. The behavior is execute. The condition is the equation for area and the criteria is um, solve the given problems with 85% accuracy. Okay, I can even make this a little bit easier from our worksheet. I showed you guys plus signs for where we were adding the things together. So this is the behavior. This is the condition. And this is the criteria. Let's look at another one. Sketch the bowl of fruit using lines and cross-hatching techniques. These are just some of the examples of learning objectives that you can come up with. The more specific a learning objective is, the better you can assess whether they have achieved, they being your students, whether they've achieved the goal or not. So for example, the one we just came up with was establish a set of rules for observing changes during the experiment. We can go a step further with this and really make it super clear what our expectations and how we can assess whether they have achieved this goal or not in the learning objective. So to change it, I've added lab, temperature, and using three types of thermometers. Let's read our new learning objective. The new one is establish a set of lab rules for observing temperature changes during the experiment using three types of thermometers. Now, whether this is something that you'd actually use in the classroom or not, I'm just trying to get across the idea to you that when things are more specific in learning objectives and they have measurable elements, it really makes it a lot easier for you as a teacher to determine whether your students are actually getting the information or not. So for this one, establish a set of lab rules for observing temperature changes during the experiment using three types of thermometers. I can tell if my students are getting this or not because I can say, are you coming up with lab rules or are you coming up with classroom rules? Are you observing the correct thing that I'm asking you to observe? Are you using the amount of thermometers that I'm asking you to use? All of these things will come into play in terms of achieving the goal or not. Let's try writing a learning objective. So I want you to write two learning objectives for each of the learning targets you wrote previously. Remember, Lesson objectives should be much more specific and measurable than learning targets. You're going to follow the same path. A slide is going to pop up in a moment, and what you'll see is a blank space in order for you to write them in. You can go back and forth between your previous answers and this new section in order to answer these questions and create your own learning objectives. Good luck!